Hi, my name is Professor Ernest Van Dijk. I'm the director for the Center for Energy Research at the NMMU. Uh, the focus of the CER has been mainly renewable energy and energy efficiency. And we have projects in photovoltaics or solar electricity, wind energy, solar thermal energy, uh, energy efficiency and energy storage. The CR is also part of the South African University's radiometric network where we monitor solar resource across the country at the different uh, campuses and this data is made available in the public domain for uh, people to use. You'll also see our uh, radiometric station at our outdoor research facility. Right, we are we are on top of the roof of the outdoor research facility and I'm standing next to a solar tracker. It's a very accurate solar tracker that's part of the South African University radiometric uh, data network. Uh, it is uh, monitoring the direct solar irradiance with a spirometer and diffuse irradiance as well as the global horizontal irradiance and it's uh, doing it very accurately and then sending the data to whoever uh, on the network. My name is Nicholas Kwarikunda. I'm a PhD student working on solar cell characterization using the light beam induced current measurement technique. So basically what we do, uh, we shine a laser light onto a solar cell surface and then we measure the induced current from the solar cell as a function of position uh, to get a photoresponse map. And from that photoresponse map, we can identify defects that may be present on either on the solar cell surface or within the solar cell. Here we are inside the outdoor research facility building and uh, what we have here is a grid assist uh, photovoltaic inverter. Uh, the photovoltaic panel sits on the roof. Uh, it uh, also does uh, charge batteries behind this wall over here. So our whole facility runs off the grid. So if there's any power failures, we don't know about them at all. And here we have a monitoring computer that monitors all the energy in and out, the batteries from the photovoltaic system and from the AC grid. Hi, I'm Ross Schultz. I'm a PhD student here. Um, my project deals with concentrated photovoltaics which basically we aim to do is to take um, out the bulk of the um, silicon cells and replace it with um, high efficiency concentrated cells. Basically what we do is we take the um, direct instant light and use these um, cost-effective Fresnel lenses to concentrate it onto the concentrated panels. Here we're standing at a three kilowatt grid uh, tie in inverter uh, photovoltaic system. Uh, these panels supply power to an inverter, which is right behind here, which feeds power directly into the grid. I'm Dr. Dennis Okello. Uh, my research is on the energy yield of, of photovoltaic system, and the interest in this case is to, to determine the, the energy losses associated with the environmental effect, like the effect of dust on the photovoltaic, photovoltaic module where we compare the, the energy output from the photovoltaic system compared to the, to the rated power. Okay, we are here at the photovoltaic testing lab of the uh, Center for Energy Research uh, on the CSIR campus. And uh, what we see here is a solar simulator, an indoor solar simulator, that can measure the current voltage characteristics of PV modules. And by looking at these characteristics, you can identify defective uh, modules or uh, problems in, uh, in the modules. Just like we've done at the outdoor research facility, we also have an outdoor uh, IV tester there. My name is Jackie Crozier and I'm a PhD student um, in the physics department at NMMU. My project focuses on electroluminescence, which is a technique that allows you to detect um, problems in a photovoltaic module, uh, things like cracks and defects um, and broken cells. Hi there, we're back at the outdoor research facility. As you have seen, we are doing experiments in renewable energy. We, at this facility, we generate our own electricity and the electricity that we then consume is electricity that's generated without burning any fossil fuels. 
since we generate more electricity than we consume, our meter actually runs backwards and therefore contribute to the sustainability efforts of the university and linking in with the One Planet Living initiative. My name is Russell Phillips. I look after the Renewable Energy Research Group here on the North Campus. Our activities involve uh, development and commercialization of renewable energy technologies to make them more viable and attractive to the general public. Our work has largely started around uh, small wind turbines, <clears throat> but we've moved into solar thermal work and hydrokinetic energy harvesters. Typically, our success is measured in the viability of the, the final product, and this ultimately culminates in commercialization of a product. Some of our success stories so far have been the Twirly Streetlight, which we developed in conjunction with, with ENSA, and a PV tracker system, and as you'll see in a short while, a thermal rock storage system. We also have the segmented wind turbine that's been patented, which you'll see a bit later on. I'm Sean Poole, I'm a master's student here at NNMU. Um, my topic that I'm busy with is a segmented variable pitch wind turbine. So I'm designing a wind turbine that can hopefully produce more or harvest more energy in uh, a gusty wind environment. The concept behind this uh, variable pitch segmented turbine is that your blade is split up into different sections and each section has its own uh, rudder, you could say, which sets itself to the angle of the wind. And so the blade would set its own pitch um, according to what it feels that the wind is doing. So if a, a gust hits it or a lull hits it, the blade would autom automatically change its pitch and change back. Okay, my name is Mohammed Bello Maidadi. I'm doing my master's in mechanical engineering in a solar thermal energy storage system. So this is here, what we have here is the solar thermal energy storage that we develop here. What we're doing here is uh, we're trying to store directly solar thermal energy without converting it to electricity. So in this system, we have rocks that are packed. So the principle is quite simple. We want to heat the air using solar energy and transfer that energy from the air to the rocks. And the objective will be to heat the rocks up to 300 degrees and store that thermal solar energy for at least three days. We're using, uh, I will take you outside now to show you the parabolic trough solar collectors that we use. The, they heat the air and the heated air will go through that system here and then we'll transfer the energy from the air to the rocks. So what is the application is like uh, for heating your house, maybe for uh, anything, heating, uh, domestic heating application, water, like uh, heating water systems, everything that you want to use, that's uh, wh whatever that requires heat, that's, 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 that's what the application is for. Um, hi, my name is Martin Bodnost and I'm currently studying my BTEC in mechanical engineering at NMMU. This is our NMMU solar car and it's essentially an electric vehicle which is charged off six square meters of photovoltaic cells that gives you about the same power output as your average household hairdryer. Um, it's just come back from the Joburg International Motor Show and we're currently working on the design for the next concept. This current one got up to about 103 k's an hour in the last race in 2012. Uh, one of the projects that we're working on here at the Renewable Energies Lab is an a electric bicycle project where we have, in the future, we would like to have a bunch of bicycles where they all can fit into a certain type of docking station powered by renewable energies. Um, and so a student comes with their student card, they swipe out a bike, and now they can use that bike to then cycle to another campus or to go to the shops. Um, and then come back in and sw swipe the card and log their bike back in and then the system registers that they've returned the bike. So this bike here, yeah, the, the first one that we've got, so we're busy testing it. I ride it about 10 kilometers to work and 10 kilometers back from work every day. Uh, we've been monitoring the energy usage, mileage, stuff like that. And so far the costs per kilometer are about two cents per kilometer. You save a lot of energy using this type of transport system.